it's Rowan and today we're going to be talking about two film analysis tests, the Bechdel test and the Mori test. So let's start with the Bechdel test. This is a test based on a conversation that's had between characters in Alison Bechdel's comic strip Dykes to Look Out For. In order to pass the test, a film needs to do three things. One, have more than one named female character. Two, have those characters talk to each other. And three, have that conversation be about something other than a man. Now, although this comic strip was released 30 years ago, um, the Bechdel test, I think, has come more into the forefront for various reasons. One, because it's widely used online in um, criticism and discourse. And two, because Sweden introduced a Bechdel film rating system where films that you would go and see would have a rating um, for whether or not it passed the Bechdel test. Now this gave it a kind of um, authority which it hadn't had previously. And I think many people were confused as to what the test was meant to be showing or what the rating would actually do for a film. The Bechdel test is often used to criticise the film industry as a whole by showing that a clear majority of films and even films that are very highly critically regarded will often fail the test. Here I have a short list of films from the IMDb top 250 films uh, which failed the test. So District 9, Up, Wally, The Diving Bell and the Butterfly, The Prestige, all three Lord of the Rings films, The Princess Bride, Slumdog Millionaire in Bruges. But we also have some films which fail the test um, but which have very strong female characters in them, often the female character being the sole protagonist and this becomes very difficult when we're trying to critique a film from a feminist point of view when using the Bechdel test because many people would argue that these films are just as validly um, feminist and have just as interesting female characters even though they technically fail. So a very prominent example of this in the last couple of years has been Gravity and importantly for this video, also Pacific Rim. So this leads me on to the Mako Mori test. This was a test designed by Tumblr user Chyla in 2013. And this test came from a place where many people were acknowledging that although Pacific Rim had failed the Bechdel test, Mako as a character was interesting and dynamic and had a strong story arc to the point where they felt that some recognition of this film was needed in feminist criticism. So for a film to pass the Mako Mori test, it needs to do three things. One, have at least one female character. Two, have that female character have her own story arc. And three, have the story arc not be supporting a man's story arc. So both these tests are tests that we can use to analyse film and other narrative media in order to have a look at and examine the female characters. Please note that I did not say that these tests were a measure of how feminist a film is, because they're not. They're not a measure of how feminist a film is, how good a film is, or even how good the female characters are. So what are the pros and cons of these tests and what can they actually show us? Now, of course, the Bechdel test literally shows us what films have uh, female characters talking about things other than men. But what we can gain from that is an idea of how complex the female friendships and relationships are within that film. As I've said before, it is also a good indication of the industry as a whole. It's all very well for an individual content creator to be saying, you know, it doesn't really matter if my film doesn't pass the test, because we're also looking at the data of the industry as a whole. And so yes, it might not matter to you in particular if you are creating something which doesn't pass the test, but when you acknowledge that a majority of people are also not passing the test, then you start to see the problem. Another positive for the Bechdel test is that it is very easy to apply. The three criteria have pretty simple yes or no answers to them. So it can be quite useful as a test to um, prompt people to acknowledge that there's a problem. So in that way, I would say probably one of the most important pros to the Bechdel test is um, the way in which it can open up conversations. It's an important starting point to say, okay, it might be that we have all these films that fail the test, but we consider to be absolute masterpieces of cinema. So maybe let's examine why we think they're masterpieces of cinema, why they don't have any female female characters in them, why if they don't have female characters because for instance they're set in a prison or in a uh, military space or somewhere where women can't be and so it doesn't make sense for women to be there because of the narrative, why are we so invested in telling stories in places where women aren't? I'd also like to point out that a nice application of the Bechdel test is to look at the reverse Bechdel test. So to look at films and try and see if they have more than two named male characters, that those two male characters have a conversation and that they have a conversation about something other than a woman and you'll be interesting to find how very many of the films technically will pass that test like pretty much across the board the reverse Bechdel test gets a pass Many people have argued that it is not a mark of quality I would say that it isn't meant to be a mark of quality and so I think that this criticism is a little bit troublesome. I think the criticism relies on people misunderstanding what the test should be used for in the first place. Otherwise every bad lesbian porn film 
would pass the Bechdel test and be hailed as some kind of feminist vision. It acknowledges good, isolated female characters. As shown by its origins in Pacific Rim, um, it can be a really important test for intersectional feminism in particular. Um, to have a single um, Asian female character is a really important piece of representation that shouldn't be overlooked just because she doesn't have conversations with other women. The Makomori test also acknowledges um, women's story arcs and women's storylines. You actually are acknowledging the fact that women should be going through the same sort of hero's journey as any male character should be. Unlike the Bechdel test, it's a little bit harder to implement. It relies a lot more on um, subjectivity. The first point is pretty easy, but when you get to the second point, what exactly counts as a storyline? Does it have to be a main storyline? Is it a small subplot? Again, there is the argument that it isn't particularly a mark of quality. I would argue, again, it's not meant to be a mark of quality. It is what it is. All it's saying is that there are there is at least one woman who actually gets her own storyline in, in the film. Um, it's not going to say, okay, this is what a good film needs, or this is going to be a good film because it has this. The last criticism I'd say would be kind of based around the film that it's based on and the character it's based on, that, you know, that film had over 50 male characters and three female characters. And there is the danger that it starts to perpetuate the quite dangerous idea of, you know, the one worthwhile woman or the Smurfette principle, the idea that, um, for example, it's enough for us to have one woman in an ensemble cast um, and have her have a story arc um, and not acknowledge the fact that you're also giving seven male characters a story arc as well. Um, that in and of itself isn't a problem, but when that happens consistently over and over again and becomes a trend or a pattern, then you have to ask yourself, you know, is it really enough that we only have this one female character and people can use the test on the film and people who are misunderstanding the test as a mark of quality can, you know, nod their heads and say, yes, this is what makes a good, a good film. So here's the thing, I know that the title of this video says verses, but looking at the test, looking at their criticisms and looking at how they can be applied, I'd actually say the strongest way that they work is together. The Makomori test isn't going to let you get away with having two throwaway female characters have a single conversation. Similarly, the Bechdel test isn't going to let you get away with always just having, you know, one female character amongst a bunch of men. What using these two tests in combination can do is open up a narrative, get people talking about criticising their own work, and it might be that that person can say, yeah, actually, here are the reasons, and they can be totally valid. But it might well be that that person hasn't really thought about the own biases that they hold. It's these conversations that happen after we apply the test which are important. So, do you have any other ideas of tests we can use to start these conversations? Have you had discussions with people where these tests have managed to open their eyes to the biases within the industry? Or do you have your head in the sand and you think there are literally no problems with the way that women are being represented in media at the moment? If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please consider liking and subscribing. And just a reminder that the live stream book discussion is this Sunday at 6pm GMT. I will leave all the details in the description. I hope to see you there. Until then, bye!